Hello learners. In this lecture, we will try to understand how the flexural tension test has to be conducted on the beam. So we'll try to understand uh, first in terms of theory. Then we'll try to understand all these things. And then we'll try to see the logic behind all these things, how this test has to be conducted. What is the logic behind that and all those things, right? Yeah. So to begin with, we'll start with the theory part. So this flexural tension strength test what we have, we call it as a two point loading test on the beam. Since we apply two point on the beam, we call it as a two point. Coming to the aim to determine the models of rupture of a given concrete beam specimen by two point loading. So models of rupture in the sense something what to try to break. So breakage is called as is called as rupture. So since we are breaking the beam by applying that force and as a result of that the tension is created. So we call it as a modulus of rupture also. Apparatus we require a universal testing machine. Coming to the theory part, flexural strength of a concrete is known. Flexure means something called as bending. We call it as a flexural strength. Flexure is called as bending. Flexural strength of a concrete is known by its modulus of rupture, which is the extreme fiber stress in the bending. There are two methods of finding the flexural tension. One is by central point loading and by the two point loading. But the Indian standard 516.1959 specifies two point loading. And the standard sizes of the mold, what we use for doing this test are 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter by 70 centimeter or 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 50 centimeter. So you can see the molds here, right? So we'll try to understand. These are the two different mold we have. So this is this will be my 700 mm or 70 centimeter or 500 mm. This will be my 100 mm or 150 mm. And this height will be 100 mm or 150 mm. That means if you're taking a bigger uh, mold, then you have to maintain a size of 700 mm is a length and the width will be 150 mm and this depth will be 150 mm. If you're going for a smaller mold, then this length what you have, that will be 500 mm. The length will be 500 mm and this uh, will be 100 mm and the depth also will be 100 mm, right? So under which circumstances we need to use this. So the code says that if you're using an aggregate of 20 mm, then you try to use the bigger size that is 700 mm by 150 mm by 150 mm. But so you can see these are my 20 mm aggregates if I use and not 20 mm aggregate. So the normal construction what we do in RCC and all, we usually go with a 20 mm aggregate. So that is the reason we always try to do uh, this 700 mm by 150 by 150 in the lab. Just in case if you're using a aggregate size of course aggregate less than 19 mm, right? So in that case, the code says that you can try to use the, the smaller size of the specimen that is for 500 mm by 100 mm by 100 mm. So it all depends up to you what kind of course aggregates are using. Based on that, we try to choose it. But here we'll try to choose the bigger one only since that is what we practice in most of the labs, right? Yeah. Now coming to the procedure. Uh, this is the procedure what you need to write if they ask it. But as of now, I will not try to understand this since it will take long time. We'll directly get into the procedure so that all these things becomes clear. Yeah. So this is how that two point loading test is done. You can see the beam. This beam is casted here and you can see this is a testing machine where you're putting this compressive load. And you can see you are keeping one roller here. This is second roller. So there are two points which is touching the beam. Hence it is called as two point loading test. You can see here as well. You have kept a beam specimen. And uh, from here you are applying a load. From here the load comes actually. And uh, it is on two points. So hence it is called as two point loading test. Right. So most of the things we have tried to cover here. Now coming to the procedure of all these things. So flexural testing of concrete beam. This is a mold what we have. So as I mentioned. We have two different sizes. One is 700 mm by 150 mm by 150. The other is 500 into 100 into 100. So let us say this particular specimen what I have, it is a 700 mm by 150 mm by 150 mm. And we need to do a certain calculation here before we start with the test. So let us say this outer to outer is 700 mm for me. And you can see, you know, this beam is supported on this roller and on this roller. So what is this cantilever portion what I have from the center of the roller and from the center of the roller. So this is 50 mm from this center of the roller to this outer. Similarly, from this center to the outer, it is 50 mm. So now next is that what will be my center to center next? 
next is from this center to this center what is the distance 700 minus 50 minus 50 comes out to be 600 mm so the center portion what i have it comes out to be 600 mm right and this 600 mm only we are going to consider for our calculation because this cantilever portion we don't consider it since we say that the load will not reach up to that level and uh, and very little uh, space is left out here because you can see the rollers here no the small portion yeah let me go back these rollers themselves are very bigger in diameter these rollers what you have since we have only 50 now in the picture it looks very big but just imagine that this space what we are keeping is just 50 mm right and we know what is 50 mm it's just 5 centimeter and out of that the diameter of this roller itself is very big that you left that you are left with only 20 to 30 mm offset here so that's a very small portion what we are neglecting right so that is why whatever calculation we do now so we consider that the length of my beam is only from here to here right from this portion let me do it here yeah from this portion to this portion that's it so what is that portion length we have 600 mm then we try to apply the load in the middle third middle one third so we try to divide this length by three that is if you divide 600 by three what we get we get 200 mm 200 mm and 200 mm as the equal parts so that is what you can see here so this is these things we need to do even before we perform the test so so this 600 is divided into three parts one two and three parts so from here to here it is 200 mm from this center to this center it is 200 mm from here to here it is 200 mm right so most of the things are clear here now you can see the same thing even before we do the test we need to do this uh, marking on the beam now you can see the marking has been done this is a beam what i have taken and uh, this is that uh, last end point what we have where we keep this roller this is that marking we have done and then this is a middle portion marking one he is here the second is here same thing i have done it here the same thing you can see on this beam practically being done right yeah so once this is done next what we try to do with the help of these two rollers we try to apply a compressive force that is p here so since we are applying a p force here since we have two point here so it is p by two force coming here and p by two force coming here so because of this there is a reaction happening you need to understand the fundamentals of this so let us say this is a p force coming from here and we, since it is a single force it is transferred in two rollers so what will happen p by two on this roller p by two on this roller force will come so since uh, every action is equal and opposite reaction because of this action you get a reaction here and whatever is your action that is p by two the same reaction get developed as p by two and also p by two and because of this the bending moments are generated as a result of that what will happen a tension is created as a result of that you first get a crack here and then your beam is going to fail we need to understand one more thing here when i say when i speak of beam we need to understand something called as tension and compression so if i take this as my beam we have one layer something in the middle which is called as neutral axis let me write it here we call it as a neutral axis so this is n i'll write it in this way neutral axis so whatever is above the neutral axis we say that that portion is in compression whatever is above the neutral axis of the beam that portion is in compression and whatever is below the neutral axis this portion is in tension so we know that concrete is strong in compression so nothing will happen in the compression region since the concrete is weak in tension it's going to crack in the tension region and the same can be seen here you can see the crack has started from the middle portion then it will try to propagate to the top since my concrete is weak in tension the crack will appear in the bottom in the tension region and then it will try to propagate so these things we need to understand even before we do the test so you can see the crack happening here right so i hope it's clear up to here so next thing is that i told you about two specimen one is for the 700 the next is for a 500 just in case if you're going for a 500 then this outer to outer is 500 again this and this will be 50 50 that means out of 500 50 50 100 is gone we are left with 400 in the middle this 400 you have to divide it by three parts three equal parts so it comes out to be how much it comes out to be 133 i guess let me do it 400 divided by three it comes out to be 133 mm so this is 133 this portion this portion is 133 and this portion is 133 right yeah yeah so now coming to the fundamentals of this what we have understood so up to here the procedure is done we'll I'll go back nothing very simple i'll go back again up to here you apply a load you get that uh, crack here uh, then you try to find what is the force coming 
for that there is a formula given we'll go back to that formula i'll quickly show the formula this is that formula given sigma b is equal to pl upon b d square you put that formula you get answer that's it this is the entire procedure but even before that we need to understand all the fundamentals so now we'll try to understand something from here so as i mentioned this is a beam what i have i'm applying a force right so this p by 2 p by 2 force will come actually i'm applying a p force but due to that two rollers the force get distributed has one point on this one point on this as p by 2 p by 2 so every action is equal and opposite reaction for the p by 2 forces the reaction get developed here this is p by 2 and p by 2 now from the strength of material concepts we know that something called shear force diagram and bending moment diagram so this is my shear force diagram and this is my bending moment diagram how they get generated it's very simple so you have a reaction coming here so this reaction will try to put a force here so this will go up so we have so we have a lot of sign convention and all but as of now it's okay we'll take it up from here there is no load acting on this beam so up to this point it will be constant now suddenly have a load of p by 2 we have a load of p by 2 acting upward so i took it upward now this is constant here and you have a p by 2 load acting in the downward direction so i'll take it up to here so this is p by 2 now after this i don't have any load so that means again it has to be constant so that is why you can see it is going constant now once i reach to this point that is reach this point again i'm applying a p by 2 force in the downward direction so what will happen this shear force diagram will go down it will come down from here there is no force coming so up to here there is no force coming up to here but again at the end you are you are getting a upward reaction so it will try to take it up so we have reached up to this spot and from here it has taken to the up so this is my shear force diagram similarly you have to plot the bending moment diagram so how do you put a bending moment diagram so for the bending moment diagram yeah so it will be zero here where so this part it will start from zero and from here it has to go linear right it has to go linear and at this portion there is no bending moment i mean the bending moment is constant at this portion so it will go straight here and from here it is going to come down right so in this way it's going to happen so we need to understand one thing this test what we are doing is from bending point of view right now you can see this particular zone in this particular zone the shear force is zero right in this particular zone the shear force is zero and in this particular portion in the bending moment diagram what is happening the bending moment is constant isn't it there is no up to if you look here here the bending moment is zero but from here it is varying isn't it yeah and same on the edges here also the bending moment is zero from here the bending moment is increasing 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 but at this particular point in this particular zone what i'm showing the bending moment is constant whatever it has come here the same bending moment is here that means the bending moment is constant i'll write it as c so this situation what we have where the shear force is zero and bending moment is constant it is called as pure bending what we call it as pure bending that means i my beam is bending my beam is breaking or my beam is bending purely due to bending and there is no shear force suppose if i take here and all let us say at this particular point here the bending moment is also there and corresponding to that we have a shear force but here the shear force here the bending moment is constant at this particular region in this and here the shear force is zero so this makes my beam as a simple beam i mean only there is a bending here so that is why we try to apply load in this way so that we get a a constant bending moment and zero shear force so that my beam will break only due to tension that is only due to bending and not due to shear and bending moment right so this is that zone now what is this value what we have the value what we have is very simple to calculate for us so the value which comes out there is yeah so it is pl by 6 this value what we have up to here and up to here it is pl by 6 how do we get this as pl by 6 so what we need to do we need to find that value in this portion and also on in this portion so we have a reaction of p by 2 it travel clockwise so p by 2 into l by 3 if you try to do p by 2 into this is force into this uh, length we get the moment so p by 2 into length is l by 3 you multiply that l by 3 so p into l is pl and 3 to the 6 so pl by 6 so i'm getting pl by 6 similarly here also you have p p by 2 this is l by 3 same thing so in this direction right so that is how we are getting all these values right i hope it's clear up to here all the things the basics what is required for us to carry forward this we have understood
Yeah, so the same thing you can see it here. Yeah, so in the next lecture, we'll try to finish off this lecture here itself. We have understood the fundamentals. So in the next lecture, we'll try to understand the three different cases because the crack what is going to form here, it has three different cases to understand. We have case one, case two and case three. When the crack is exactly at the center, when the crack will happen somewhere here, I mean, the crack happens somewhere here. So we have three different cases. Based on that, we have certain formulas here, which is written here and which is written here. And we'll try to understand those things in the next lecture so that we get a complete idea of this particular test, what we're supposed to do, right? So I hope you have got an idea how it has to be done, the fundamentals. So in the next lecture, we'll try to understand this in a more better way. And we'll try to understand on which uh, basis this formula has to be applied based on the crack pattern that is developed in my beam. So we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.